Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some quick tips for editing wrinkles out of a seamless backdrop. Um, so this adorable photo is from Kelly Ratliff. Thank you, Kelly, for letting me use your photo for this. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is just extend the bottom of this seamless paper to the edge of the image at the bottom. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to get rid of the wrinkles. Um, so right now I've just got the background open. Um, what I'm gonna do is grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna make a selection just underneath those chair legs uh, to the bottom of the paper. And there's a wrinkle at the very bottom. So I'm gonna stop just before that so that I just get a selection of the smooth um, seamless paper. So once my selection is made, what I wanna do is hit Command or Control J to place that selection on its own layer. And then I can edit it by itself. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just stretch it down. Um, so I want to hit Control or Command T on my keyboard in order to pull up Free Transform. And you can get to that by going to Edit Free Transform as well, whatever's easier for you. Um, so I am working on Photoshop 2020, and in this version of the program, if I just drag this selection, it's gonna extend in all directions. Um, so what I wanna do here is hold down my Shift key in order to tell Photoshop that we just wanna drag in one direction. Um, and then I'm just gonna extend it all the way to the bottom of the photo, and then hit the check mark at the top of my screen when I'm done. Um, so that is just a quick way to extend that backdrop here. And then to get rid of the wrinkles, I need to merge these two layers together, my background and the changes I just made, but I don't wanna flatten and get rid of my work. So I'm gonna use another keyboard shortcut. Um, and this one is Command Option Shift E, or if you're on a PC, that's Control Alt Shift E. And what this does is it takes both of those layers and merges them into one new layer so you don't actually have to flatten. Um, and then this layer is the one that we're gonna use to get rid of those wrinkles. So to do this, I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, and then I'm gonna go to Surface Blur. So Surface Blur is a little bit confusing at first in that you have to use both uh, sliders here in order to make any changes. So what I usually do is just slide the radius over a little bit. The radius is gonna blur, uh, but you have to slide the threshold to tell Photoshop how much of the photo you want blurred. Um, so I generally just randomly slide over that radius a little bit, and then I start to adjust the threshold here. And what I'm looking for is just, I wanna see some blur, but I don't really want it, at, or I don't want it to apply to my subject um, or the chair she's sitting on, just the background. So I'm gonna reduce the threshold here so that it doesn't make that chair so blurry. Okay, so here I'm at a threshold of about 30. I'm gonna go down to maybe about 15, um, and I'm, basically just looking at the edges of that chair. I just want them to um, be kept intact. And so the threshold of 14 here looks a little bit better to me. I'm gonna increase the radius just a little bit, paying attention only to those wrinkles on the backdrop. Um, so I'm just gonna slide that up a little bit more until I can see those fade a little more. And so this is just kind of give and take and it will depend on the image that you're working on. Um, so just drag as much as you need and then you can adjust the threshold too to tell Photoshop how much you want blurred. So here I really only need a, a lower threshold because the only thing I wanna blur is the smoothest part of the photo, which is that backdrop. Um, so I think that these settings are pretty good for this image, a radius of 56 and a threshold of 14. Feel free to slide these to your liking for your photo um, and just ignore it over your subject and the chair for now. We are going to use a layer mask to control where this applies. So when you're satisfied with the blur, hit OK. And then we are going to add a layer mask. We have to wait for these changes to accept first. And then um, you add a layer mask by hitting the rectangular button with the circle inside at the bottom of your layers panel. And that will just allow you to choose how much of this shows up on your photo. So for me, I'm actually gonna remove it entirely and then paint it on where I want it. So to do that, um, with my layer mask selected, I'm gonna hit Control or Command I on my keyboard, and that's gonna invert that mask and just hide that blur from the photo for now. Then I'm gonna grab a white brush and I'm gonna paint on the photo where I want to reveal that blur. So on a black layer mask, everything is hidden um, and you can paint with white where you want that specific effect to show up. So here, I'm just gonna paint right over those wrinkles on the backdrop. And I'm gonna make my brush smaller. I'm doing that with my left bracket key, which is right next to the letter P on my keyboard. And I'm just going to paint over those wrinkles. And this is a pretty quick way to do it because surface blur keeps the edges of that chair nice and sharp. So I can get 
close to it without being super precise. Um, and then just do a quick sweep of my brush to get those wrinkles uh, to go away. And so just make your brush as small as you need to get between uh, the legs of the chair. If you don't have a chair in your photo, you can make your brush small to get around your subject um, or between any areas that you need to paint this on. And that's that. So this is, um, I will hold down option and click the little eyeball on the background layer to show you the before and after. So we've just smoothed those wrinkles out and extended that backdrop down. And it's super quick and easy. I love um, using surface blur for things like this. Um, I can tell from my mask that I didn't even paint it down all the way towards the bottom. So if I do, you'll actually see that any of the little pieces of um, dirt or like specks that were on the backdrop all get smoothed out too. So paint as much of that on um, as you need, even if it's not a wrinkle, you know, it could just be like a little mark on the, the backdrop or whatever. Surface Blur will generally get that out for you. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.